Hey there! So, in this lesson, we'll be talking about trigonomic ratios with obtuse angles. Now, what are obtuse angles? Well, in short, obtuse angles are angles that are greater than 90 degrees. So, let me just get my pencil here. So, it's greater than 90 degrees. And uh, sometimes you're going to have to reimagine the triangle on our Cartesian plane. Because when we're dealing with trigonomic ratios, we are essentially dealing with triangles. But except in this one, in this lesson, these triangles will be on a Cartesian plane. So like an X and Y uh, plot graph in, the, in a sense. Okay, so, uh, and it always starts off here. Uh, this is the beginning point, the initial arm, and it rotates counterclockwise. So this is the terminal arm. And you can make a triangle based on that. So again, the stand position is when the angle starts at zero, here is zero, and it rotates clockwise. The triangle with an obtuse angle, or an angle of nine degrees, must be reimagined. So, uh, if you're rotating it more than nine degrees, then you end up here, and then you can reimagine your triangle like this, the, the 90 degree angle here. But the coordinates will be different, the triangle will be essentially, essentially the same, but the coordinates are, are somewhat different. Same thing here. This is just a reflection on the y-axis, but in the sense that this angle here is the same as this angle here, and the only difference is, is that this is a more than 90 degrees. The best way to understand these problems is to do examples. So, let us read the first example. It says here, determine the primary trigonomic ratios of an angle in a standard position with a terminal arm passing through point, and here's the point here, it's 5 and 2, the x is 5 and the y is 2, and ask you to round your answer to the, uh, the nearest uh, three decimal places. So for your convenience, I have put this diagram here, and I already pl it's already plotted, so you can see what it looks like. So here's your triangle on a Cartesian plane. So the first thing we should do, if you're doing, um, again, we're talking about trigonomic ratios. And when we talk about, when we talk about trigonomic ratios, we're talking about so, ka, toa. So, ka, toa. Those are tri trigonomic ratios. But here for so, ka, toa, we have an H. We don't have an H, we have to calculate that. So we're going to calculate R. And because it's a right triangle, I know I can use Pythagorean's theorem. So there, actually, there's other ways of calculating it. Uh, you can use to, um, you can use TOA. There's a whole bunch of ways of calculating, but the easiest way I find is to use Pythagorean's th theorem. And if you can use Pythagorean's theorem wherever you can, that would be my first thing to do, uh, my go-to. Obviously, you can use the um, the previous lesson to, to calculate R, but Pythagorean's theorem is by far the easiest method as far as I know. So the R. Well, if you don't remember Pythagorean's theorem. It's essentially, let me just write here, Pythagorean theorem is, um, let me just use this R2 equals A squared plus B squared. That's essentially Pythagorean theorem. And you would essentially uh, isolate for R, so get rid of that squared, you can use a root, and you replace A and B with the values here. So this is 5 and 2. And what's funny is that it doesn't really matter if the values here are positive or negative. The answer always comes out the same, so you don't have to be so concerned about what, whether it's positive or negative. So 5 squared and 2 squared, and essentially we get a value of 5.385. Good. So now let's get our trigonomic ratios. Let's do the sine first. So sine, angle, and you remember that uh, sine is essentially... Um, opposite over hypotenuse. We calculate our hypotenuse. Our opposite in this case is the opposite from the angle. So it's from here to here. That's our opposite. So it's 2. It's 2 over 5.385. We can get the value of that, which is 0 0.371. Okay, that's uh, for the first part. The second one is cos. And if you remember from Sokotoa, it is adjacent over hypotenuse. 
which is essentially 5 over the hypotenuse, uh, 3.85, and we get a value of 0 0.929 units. I would say units, units, there's nothing, there's no, there's no units here, so, sorry, there's no specific units, so I'm just calling it units. And the last one, tan, the angle, and that will be adjacent, oh wait, uh, OA, so I just go back there. It's tan, the angle, is opposite over adjacent. The opposite here is 2. Adjacent here is 5. As you can see here, opposite, and this is the adjacent, means beside. And we have a value of 0 0.400 units. So easy enough. That's how you do these type of problems with obtuse angles. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next problem. It's, all these problems are done pretty much the same way. Um, okay, let's read the next one. So we have a point Q, which is on negative 3 on the X and then uh, 7 on the Y. It lies on the terminal arm of the of an angle. Um, this is the angle theta in standard position. Determine the pr uh, primary trigonomic ratios of the angle to three decimal places. So again, we are looking for so ka toa. That's what we're looking for. But here again, in order, in order for a hypotenuse, we need to calculate r. r is calculated the same way. r equals root. And again, um, the x and y that you're here, it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. You always come up with the same answer. So here, I'm just going to put on negative 3. Like, it doesn't matter if you put negative 3 or not. You still come up with the same answer ultimately. But I'm just putting here to illustrate to you that it, you, that, that you'll get the answer regardless. Okay. That would be uh, 5. Oops, my must not 5. It will be 7.616. So it will be 7.616. So we have our R. And now let's get into it. Sine theta. Again, that's opposite over hypotenuse. And in this case, the opposite is negative 3. Oh, sorry, it is, um, it is 7 over hypotenuse 7.616. We get about 0 0.919 units. Let's do cos. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And adjacent here is negative 3 over hypotenuse is 7.616. And you get uh, negative 0 0.394 units. And finally, we can do tan theta. And it's over A, OA. And the opposite here, it opposite is uh, seven over negative three. And if you know math, you can both, you can often push that negative to the top. But in this case, I'm not. Just to illustrate to you, you, you always get the same sort of value, whether you push it to the top or not. It's good practice to push it to the top, though. Three, three, three units. Easy enough. Okay, the last one. Here we go. Again, compare the primary trigonomic ratios of the angle whose terminal arm passes through this point and that point. So, we're going to have a lot more, uh, well, basically, it's just, a, a, it's just a, a reflection on the y-axis, but our values will, pre, will pretty much be the same. Okay, let's, uh, let's make the comparison. So, the first thing we're going to do is calculate r. r will be the same for both of them. So, essentially, R or uh, just R equals basically R theta. If you if you look at the it's exactly the same length, so that's pretty much the same thing. So R equals root. In this case, it will be um, I'm not going to use any negatives. I'm just going to say 
3 squared plus um, 4 squared. And that should give us just 5. Even if we, even if I used um, even if I used the the other one, like even if I use negative three, negative three squared plus four squared, I'm still gonna end up with five. It doesn't matter because what happens here is this three squared, three squared becomes nine, but this negative three squared also becomes nine because whenever you square something, it always comes up positive. Okay, so now let's get on to our trigonomic ratios. Let's do the sine first. Sine theta. And again, that is opposite or hypo opposite over hypotenuse, which is 4 over 5. And, you know, we can leave it there. Well, let's just get the value of 0 0.8 units. There. And let's do the other one. Let's do sine theta prime. So whenever you do uh, put this little dash here, it's called prime. And then opposite prime over hypotenuse prime will give us the exact value, to be exact, <laughs> which is 0 0.8 units. Okay, let's do cos. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse adjacent is oops adjacent is three over five and that will equal 0 0.6 units okay now let's check out the, the prime cos theta prime over adjacent prime over hypotenuse prime and in this case we are getting uh, negative 3 over 5 and the only difference is you're going to get 0 0.6 units and uh, yeah, that's about it and finally let's do 10 let's do 10 over here so a little bit more space so 10 theta which is opposite over adjacent we should get 4 over negative 3 which will give us a value of negative 1.3 oh wait the first one is there's no negative so let me just erase that so it's 4 over 3 for the first one 4 over 3 because we're no we're we're looking over here we're looking at this one here so it's 4 over 3 which gives us a value of 1.3 units and let's do the prime. So tan theta prime over opposite prime over adjacent prime, which is 4 over negative 3, which gives us negative 1.3 units. Okay, so really, uh, there isn't much to this lesson. It's just uh, putting it down on a Cartesian plane and just figuring out, figuring out the trigonomic ratios. And um, yeah, and that's about it. So whether or not it's pointing here or pointing here, it, all it really does is just change it to either negative or positive. And if you are uh, calculating the prime, you if you try if you try to isolate for the angle, you notice that the angle is much more greater for the prime than it is for the the one that's not primed. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Uh, good luck with the homework, and uh, yeah, that's it.